things that kept them from working is they they were they couldn't smell, they couldn't feel, they couldn't uh, adapt. Uh, they were heavy and immobile, so they couldn't uh, deal with things that are unique and uh, and uh, unique environments and unique products. So that was, uh, and the part of that was the computing power it just wasn't wasn't there. And that's what construction is all about, is, is the ability to make something unique. So making the same thing over and over again is not what the people want in their lives, particularly when it comes to buildings that they're going to live in. So finally, the worlds have come together where uh, the technology is sophisticated enough and people are really ready to embrace it. For the most part, uh, technology has become more sophisticated in that you can give it enough data, it's so fast to be able to process it all, that it will be able to understand all of the things that range from physics to uh, you know whether a fabric is available. All those things can be captured now at once, whereas before it would be really hard and really expensive. Yeah, so I think uh, the, the thing your company does is, is integration, and that was a huge problem. Is, uh, uh, the different uh, stakeholders, the different uh, types of software, the different people involved, none of them talk the same language in terms of the computers or applications or even iconography. And now all that is finally coming together and we can image and we can think and we can process in 3D now, which is amazing. And construction's a 3D world. So that computing power, that sensing power has, has been uh, transformative. Video games are actually the thing that's that's kicked all of this off uh, for software and for understanding things, not just from the robots end of things, but more importantly from the people who want things built. So a video game allows you to go around an environment and really feel it and experience it and understand it. But in the meantime, in the background, all of the data is being figured out. In a game, it's your score and your ammo and all those other things. And in the real world, when you're actually building something, it's your price. It's how do you make this thing? How do you get it through the factory? How do you get it onto the site? So that's a big change. Those billions of dollars that went into game development, and it's literally billions and billions of dollars uh, for rendering things to make them look real, uh, to be able to uh, uh, react and in, uh, in, um, uh, work or interplay with your environment, mm -hmm. right? But also, even the sensing technologies, there are now 100, 200, 300 dollar scanners that sense in 3D in real time at sort of a video rate. Well, nobody was going to invest in that except the gaming industry, and yet that has incredible application outside the gaming industry. We're seeing uh, uh, robots that are adaptable uh, to their environment that are lighter, more nimble. Uh, we see uh, design of things in 3D and rendering of them, and then executing them, printing them, or constructing them really the way you saw them, so which, which is really exciting. So you can visualize and you can expect to get what you designed, which is, which is pretty cool. Mm, it, is, it is the real WYSIWYG, that what you see is what you get. The design is the information that goes through uh, and creates what you want in the end. And it also creates suddenly speed that's never been seen before. In three weeks, if you say, that's, that's the design I want, in three weeks it can go through our factory. Ten, twenty, thirty years ahead, uh, I would say that the number one thing is going to be more artificial intelligence, that it's going to be far less heavy lifting for humans to have to put data inside of robots. They're going to be able to figure it out on their own. I would say more unique things, not less. So we're going to have uh, bespoke uh, clothes, bespoke buildings, bespoke everything that's just custom to how you wanted it. And, and that's counter to what we thought with the Industrial Revolution. We're going to get uh, exactly what we want, which is pretty amazing. It is accelerating rapidly, and it's a lot closer than people think. It's, it's just exploding. It's kind of like a singularity right now. So, so it's, it's finally coming together. And for me, I'm really thrilled that the Canadian Construction Association is having uh, talks like this one. There's another one about modularization. That really, this this is the moment. 2016 is the time when things have got to change, mostly because of the labor situation, but also because it's actually going to be better. Mm -hmm.